Shmuel, it's Shmuel ladder made by Shmuel. Okay. Um, the last truck we had from Pittsburgh had a Shmuel ladder on it, but because it was made from Pierce, every time there was an issue, you had to go between two companies to get things taken care of. So then, because uh, the way the ladder was constructed, the strength of the ladders, that's why we ended up going back to Schmiel because the strength of their ladder is an all steel ladder. You don't have too much flexibility to it. Um, and the other reason why now for the problem with the truck, we have to go to one person instead of going to two different people. Makes sense. Um, yeah, last one was 105. This is 100. Uh, Schmiel wouldn't make a 105 unless we went with a tandem axle because of the weight restrictions on it. So hmm. that's, that's where we're at on that. What year is it? 12. 2012. Awesome. Uh, eight man, eight person uh, vehicle, one in the back, seven in the front. Hmm. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it's it, it's nice. I mean, we can get we can get into a lot of places that sometimes stray sticks can't get into. Um, but uh, like I said, downfall right now is because of manpower and all the volunteers and going away. It's it's tough to train guys because you know we're training a couple right now, but. One works for an ambulance service, so he can't be around all the time. The other one works for a uh, a uh, cat, works for cat, so he's out working on cat vehicles, and he don't get back till late. And then there's just really not too many young guys around anymore to, to drive. So I mean, we're getting there. I mean, every time we have a fire truck gets there. Yeah. You know, it just it doesn't roll like on all your AFAs and stuff like that. Hmm. But the truck's pretty much set up that any ventilation or forcible entry situation arises, we should be able to tackle it with no problem. So if it's concrete, wood, plastic, anything that you can possibly think of, we should be able to get into no problem. Any chance of taking a look in the compartments and stuff? Awesome. In this compartment, we have our fittings for the um, ladder pipe. And if you look back in the middle there, that's an actual, that's a concrete saw. It's, it's like a chainsaw, but it has um, carbide blades on it, so okay. we can cut through. We can cut through a concrete floor, uh, brick, anything that we need to go through. We have Stokes basket or high angle rescue or uh, somebody's down in a hole, we can bring them out of the hole with, with using the ladder if need be. Uh, then up here we have um, the bag has the dog uh, respiration thing, so if the dog has a mask for it. Um, we also have in here on the tip and on the turntable, there's a plug in for air bottles. So if we get into a situation where the truck has to be moved or if it's too heavy of a smoke situation, the guy can plug in. And they can breathe off of that instead of sitting up there and wearing an air mask the whole time, you know, having the bottles get out there so long. Right. So, and then if, if something would happen to where he needs to come down and drop the truck or whatever, he can still wear that mask. He won't be breathing in all that garbage. We have high rise packs. Um, there's flotation device back in there in case we get into some place where we got to do water rescue where we got to put the ladder out. 
over the water to rescue somebody. And then we have various hand tools in this kind of this is the new mall we just bought. Um, it marries with the Holligan Bar really nice. I don't think I've ever seen one of these. <laughs> That's a drywall. That's for opening okay. drywall. Okay. Um, it, it, there's a fancy name for it. I just call it drywall, the drywall saw. Okay. Uh, but there is a technical name for it. And you got your Clemens block. We have multiple saws on here. You have your K12 cut or whatever you want to call these. Um, this one's set up for cutting concrete, wood, and then we have um, two of the cutter edges, which are set up for doing roof work. They got the uh, bullet chains on them because we found bullet chains work so much better going through stuff. Yeah, especially now that everybody's putting these metal roofs on, they'll go right through the metal roofs. That way you don't have to worry about taking a rotary saw up plus a uh, chainsaw or something with you to cut the wood. You hmm. Cut everything in one shot. Awesome. Um, yeah, because the problem, with, the problem with the diamond tip blades, once you get into wood and you get into... Um, the asphalt shingles, it, gum, it gums the diamonds up. Wow. It, it just kills the saw. Uh, more various hand tools. Cool. Yeah, pipe wrenches in case we got to shut off the gas line or something. And NFPA fire extinguisher for fire trucks. You have to have one. Just a through compartment. So, so we have various tools, hand tools, bolt cutters. Um, wood, in case we have to chalk something, or do some something that we've always had that on. Um, this box here. Oh, been a while. These ones have rope drags and hooks in them. So if we get into a situation like um, down in Jeanette one time, they had that big fire and they needed foam. So we could t actually take the tubing and hook it to the ladder and we can raise it out over top and flow the foam off the ladder to get it out further. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. It's just the toolbox. Somebody's been in it. Put the tools away. Um, rip pack. Uh, battery powered fan in that compartment. Electric fan and a three inch uh, hose, which is for the ladder truck. You can't see it on this side, but we could actually use this as a standpipe system, too. Okay. Okay. And we got another electric fan, air mask for the tillerman. The tillerman's usually the first guy that goes up on the roof. Once, once we get the truck set up so he can jump out, put his bunker gear on, put his mask on, go around, help set the jack pad, and then do the work. Then our ladders. Ladders, extra pipe poles, washing rake, hose ramps. If we get into a situation where we need to we get in a situation where we need to jump hose, we got hose for that. Yeah. 
power cord on the back corner. Um, cones, if we get into some place where we need the cone off. Main control box for the uh, tractor side for all the electrical stuff and also for the lights up on the ladder truck. At the end of the tip there controls all that. Extra belt for being up on the ladder. Hose roller if for some reason we need to put an inch and a half over the end or a rope or something, put that over the end of the ladder. It's just a couple rollers. Fire extinguisher decon. Decon bastards, we get in they do decon after every fire now, so we have the equipment to do it if, if need be. Um, usually the engine guys usually take care of that, but we carry that just in case we run this situation where we need to call ourselves. Okay. Various tools. Um, cutters. Drills. Lights. Um, one of the newest things we bought was rotary um, battery powered saw I haven't got to use it yet but uh, it's a lot nicer if, if we get into a area where we're doing a lot of cutting like on angles and stuff like that um, so much lighter than trying to hold that gas powered one up um, it cut, does pretty much the same thing as the battery powered um, you can cut pretty much anything that you can cut with the, with the gas power with it. So, then we have lights. This normal tool that you can see they don't get used that much. Because we have a salvage company in the city, so they do most of the salvage. More tools, battering ram, uh, power cords. We need to run power off the truck for anything. This, these are just backside handfuls, some more cutters, uh, cutting tools, piercing nozzles. Um, rebar cutter, um, lock, lock breaker, hatchet. And light salvage tubs if we have to do any salvage work or if they call the salvage company calls for tubs and their equipment's nine miles away and they off the truck. Uh, just the other side, another another saw, salvage tarps, hydro ram here. For forcible entry. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then this is just the other side. That's the other side for hooking up this side of the truck. It has pretty much the same thing. We have a five inch in here, so we can go directly to, to an engine with a five inch hose if we need to. Um, just other adapters and stuff like that. Uh, we have an AD on a truck. We have water extinguishers, um, two ticks, um, Halligan set mass. Flashlights. Then the officers see just set up the same way.
So how many uh, how many calls a year do you guys get with this station here? Oh, I would have to look that up. I usually don't keep track of that. I'm gonna probably say at least 200. Hmm. Well, probably more than that. Maybe. And they just installed that ionization thing in there for the COVID. Cleans the air. Awesome. Well, if you don't mind, I'm just going to take a couple pictures. Do a quick walk around with this a little bit. You drive the tiller? I drive both. Nice. Now, can anyone that drives the truck drive the tiller or no? Well, what Separate we, training? We, what we do is, you want to become a truck driver, you start off on the tiller. The reason being is, anybody can drive the front, okay? Put in drive, go and steer. But if you don't know what they got going through back there, you could put him into a bad decrement real quick. So we start tillerman, then they work usually a year or so tillering, um, depending on how fast they pick it up, and then move them to the front of the truck. <coughs> I mean, because back there, if, if you go up there and you, you climb up in there and you sit in the seat, you get to see the view that the tillerman has, which isn't very much. Okay. Especially whenever you're close. Like, I'm standing right here, and there's no way you could possibly see me. Right. You know what I mean? Now, how much, how much of the steering is done back there? Like, how, how does that work? It depends on the drive. If you have a good enough driver, minimal. Okay. okay. There's minimal steering. But if you have somebody if you have somebody who gets tunnel vision, that guy's gonna do a lot of work. Um and the way whenever I train guys to drive, you know, it, the the theory was always you turn opposite of the front. Okay. okay? That theory I got rid of. Okay, the theory I use is you steer away. So if you're getting close to something, you steer away from it. Okay, because if you're going down the street and for some odd reason, this guy's making a right turn, okay, and you have that theory in your head, well, he's turning this way, so I want to go the opposite way. Well, you may not have to, but if you have that theory in your head, you're going to end up hitting something. Okay. So... That's why I always push through this guy's head the theory that if you see you're getting close to something, steer away from it. Awesome. Hey, you climb up one. All right, yeah, I'll go check it out. <laughs> we have, there's, there's hoses and stuff up there too. Oh, I forgot to show you the standpipe on the other side. If there's one of the things we had added, because a couple of times whenever we were at fires, you always had to take the nozzle off to do a standpipe system. So what we did was when we designed the ladder, we had them put a connection on the side here. Okay. So we have valves we can turn off and turn on. We can run a standpipe system off the truck if we need to. Awesome. I was at the... Uh family dollar fire in Jeanette. And I left before the wall collapsed, but I know they took some damage. How bad was it? Pretty good. What? I was up on the ladder for that one. Really? Yeah, I was up and I was spraying and the, I'm not sure if it was, I could see the floor. I, I think, I want to say, I think it was the third floor. But when I was spraying, I seen the third floor, or second floor, whichever floor it was, it dropped straight down, okay? And I looked over and I could see the chimney. I seen the chimney started going this, and I think, oh shit. So then the next thing I know, it come down, boom. So it wiped out the compartment, 
That's what's nice about these compartments. It, it wiped out uh, this compartment. Didn't break the light. Don't know how it didn't break the light. Um, but the way this truck's made is it, it's compartmentalized. So all you have to do is go in, take a couple bolts off. They drop that compartment out, slide it out, slide a new one in. It's, it's good to go. Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty bad. I mean, we couldn't get the compartment open, couldn't get into it. Um, the ladder was off, thank God. We destroyed the ladder. It broke this bracket. I mean, it, it took it took a good hit. It, it survived. I mean, did the ladder take damage? No, not at all. No, because the ladder it was up. Yeah, it was up. Uh, oh, and, uh, somebody pulled one of our fans out and they had it sitting here and it got crushed. It, as a matter of fact, it was an electric fan like that one over there. Mm -hmm. it, that got crushed too. Uh, but it didn't knock the truck out of service. We still ran and couldn't get in the compartment. And they called uh, Schmiel. Schmiel had it had pre-made, so then it had to go up to Fast. Fast dropped it off. Put a new one up on. About a week later, we had the truck back. Awesome. That was a hole of fire. Yeah, I mean it. It was weird. So that that thing hit and that ladder. I'm on that ladder. It just it was doing this back and forth the whole time. I was like, oh god. Wow. Oh, well, best thing was nobody got hurt because there was a guy standing underneath that probably about. Uh, about three seconds before that thing fell. Wow. So, yeah. They had, they moved. Yeah, it was it was wild. That, that floor dropped, the wall come down on the outside. When it came down, it fell straight. It didn't come out. It went straight down, and then the chimney come out. That's what, that's what caught the truck. Wow. <laughs> All right, I'm going to check it out. All over if you want. No. <laughs> I do want to check out up here though.
What's that? Okay. 